Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, 10 more minutes, boys and girls. Happy to be here uh, in Gang Talk and talking to a diverse audience here. And as was described in my uh, bio data that was read out to you, I'm a social media activist. Of course, I have a day job, which I do. But apart from that, I got pulled into a political campaign in 2014 for a party that's now in power. And that's how I got full time into social media which of course after six o'clock in the evening. So my question to all of you in the audience was, how social is our media? Because in the Indian context, if you speak differently from what we speak abroad, say the US or the Europe, we have a different kind of take on social media. One thing is very, very clear. The media of today never represented us. Just sit back and think. The media never represented us. The print and television channels always had an axe to grind. Even they do today, they did it yesterday, and they will do it tomorrow. More importantly, they have a political motive. The television channel that you see in the night screaming out various uh, debates, the print that comes out with sensational news, all have a political twin to it. That's very important to realize. But what is more important is that technically, no one speaks for you and me. We are very, very clear about that. No one controls the social media. So that is very important. So how do we handle this social media to leverage communication? I speak at hundreds of forums, and my main passion is to tell people, young men and women like you, that communication is the forte. That is what you get recruited, and as my previous speaker was mentioning, that is what we are all here for. How well can you speak determines how well you can communicate. And social media is one of the objects that makes it happen. With the social media, you are your own correspondent. And with 103 mobile phone users, this is the most powerful weapon in India today. Not your AK-47, or not your tanks. It is this simple mobile phone that makes you a super champion, your own correspondent, and a man or a woman who can change destiny. OK, remember this. I mean, of course, you never did that. But as elders among us can relate to this, every time the road broke because of a rain or the drainage started leaking, we found that, what do we do about it? We used to sit at home and say, oh, yeah, this is what it is. We can do nothing about it. And at the maximum, what you used to do, I mean, this was from the recent rains in Hyderabad, where it rained for over 10 days, and this is the state of the roads. So what do you do? You have two options. You crib about it, or at the maximum, you write to the editor of a newspaper. You know, we have the famous letters to editor. And I've seen, for 16 years of mine, in the, in the media that I worked, in the print media, that quite often these letters go into the dustbin of the editor. He doesn't even bother. Even if it gets published, nothing much happens to it. Nothing. But what is now happening? Because from nothing happens, that is where you got to take it to. Welcome to a new India. I wish I was born 30 years late, because I envy this generation. I envy the generation that is sitting across me, who have access to a humongous amount of data, great amount of technology, and more importantly, the ability to communicate. That is very important. Because that's very clear, now, because not everybody is Arnab Goswami. The 9 o'clock debate in the night, which many people follow, including me sometimes, has become a kind of a festival in the night. It's like a rock show, where everybody screams at each other, and then everybody goes home. But that's not what we are here for. We are now looking at a revolution that started with the Industrial Revolution, and before that, with other revolutions. But from Industrial, we are now leapfrogged into a social media evolution. Today, everybody has a social media account, most people have a Twitter account. Of course, you have the Instagram and other things. But what is it that has happened today? We have moved from a world of wheels to tweets. One example was one of my friends who had taken it. And the hundreds of such pictures I can share with you. It's there on my Facebook. You can go ahead. These people post with the same mobile phone, take a picture of a violator who is doing something wrong and post it there. And mind you, this policeman actually got a chalan the third day. What have you done? As a simple citizen, instead of just ignoring a violation on the road, 
you picked up the camera, took a shot, and published it on the social media, and made a difference. Who are you? You are the new citizen of India, the ones who are sitting across in the audience with me. But how do you make it a force multiplier? How do you actually take this to the next level? Because one person doing it cannot be, that's it. It has to move ahead of times. So sometimes, you know, you want to convey something to a company like Airtel about its 4G, the famous campaign. This is how you use it. There's a sense of humor in today's world because that's exactly what we lack. All of us are very, very serious individuals. It's time we stand back and take a good laugh at ourselves. Whatever is coming to us, how do we make it as a force multiplier? Each one of us as individuals, the main problem we have is that we can make noise individually. But a group like this, for example, hundreds of thousands of students, how can you make it a force multiplier? Because there are many other problems with it. One is the challenges and threats. For example, when you get active on social media, one of the things you face is threats. Straight away, I've got enough threats in my life, saying that you'll be bumped off here, you'll be bumped off there, I'll see you there, we'll get a truck to run over you, all that kind of stuff. That's fine, it happens. You've got to live with it, or you keep quiet and do nothing about it. I prefer the former than the latter. Okay, I go back and ask yourself, how is technology being used today? For example, how is it being used today for a simple thing like booking a ticket on a railway station or having problems on the train? This is from today morning. As we speak before coming here, just half an hour before, I picked up on the tweet on the railway ministry site, somebody complaining about somebody sitting on the bus. Now remember, this is a common instance all of us have. Same problem, what do we do? We keep quiet, we call the TT, we make a noise. But today you have a new instrument in your hand, which is your Twitter, and you actually put out a message there. And that's when you have somebody from the railway ministry responding. And I had this personally. I had this, done this personally, and I have got a response within a few minutes, and the problem sorted out in the next few minutes. Which means you as individuals can have the power of the Twitter or the Facebook to make a difference. Another very popular lady who makes a major difference out there is Sushma Swaraj. Most of you would have seen that the Ministry of External Affairs site, the, the Twitter site, is very, very proactive. This is what happens with when you start using an instrument like a Twitter or a Facebook to effective use. Many of you youngsters would have seen or read about the Jasmine Revolution, the Arab Spring, and all that happened in the Middle East. These revolutions, which toppled dictators like Hosni Mubarak and others, happened because of social media. Now, how many of us sitting in this room would believe that an AK-47 or a machete or a gun is not the solution, but what we have is a Facebook or Twitter that can gather lakhs of people at a single location and create a revolution? In fact, here is a fact that you should look up. How many tweets were made? That is, over 6,75,000 tweets were made by users just before Hosni Mubarak was toppled. Huge amounts of tweets that actually resulted in a dictator who ruled with an iron fist over Egypt for a long, long time. But that's what not the main thing is. Look at how social media can be misused. On the left, you have a picture of a gentleman who was once an IPS officer, who actually uses the picture to say what a youngster was doing by actually trying to attack the army, a small kid. But look at the picture from the other angle. That is a true picture. The boy was actually playing with the army guy in Kashmir. That's how social media are used by different people in different ways. Falsehoods can be exposed. And here is one example of my favorite example of Barkhadath, who was being corrected as she told what she projected was a wrong thing. And she claimed it was because of a flu that she had a problem like that. Also, same news can be twisted in different facts. From the same publication group, like the Times of India group, Economic Times had one news headline in a Twitter message. And look at the other side. It had a different take altogether. The same message, the same press conference, twisted in two different ways. One of the tweets, uh, one of the Facebook posts I made last uh, month, which actually Mr. Suresh Prabhu retweeted, and I got almost about 8,000 likes on it immediately, was this tweet about railway engine drivers. They never had a toilet inside the, in the railway engine all these years. Imagine a guy's driving a, a train, two drivers, and they would have a toilet facility inside the engine. That's how bad it was for them. So I wrote a story on them. And here is again what I appeal to each one of you. Is pick up that phone, pick up that tweet, and do it. A correction by your own uh, Mr. Mohanda spy about Salman Khan recently. 
this tweet day for yesterday went viral, and you know it had a major implication across the scenario. You can use tell celebrities to tell a story. For example, uh, you can get somebody like uh, somebody like Virendra Sehwag, for example. He's a, quite active on Twitter, and he tells stories of people. This is a story about the, uh, the boy who won the medal at the Paralympics. And look at how the story is, how warmly it has come out that his mother used to sell vegetables. If you and me would have said it, it wouldn't have had. The force multiplier effect came from this gentleman. Again, fighting truths. And this is what most of us who are active on Twitter do that. We spend half our life battling and fighting people to correct the truths. OK, sometimes, as I said, humor makes a major difference. And after the uh, recent rains in Hyderabad and the potholes, and this is one of the tweets that came about where people had a good laugh because they said somebody regained his memory by going over the potholes. Today morning, being a Gandhi Jayanti day, and somebody wanted to have a take, and so Ashutosh had a take on saying, where is uh, you know, Bapu and where is Shastri? And so somebody gave it to him and said, look, they are here only. OK, so that's how the messages are used. Today, as I say, a picture speaks a thousand words. And these kind of pictures actually convey a lot more message than what is being actually said. Again, humor. How many of you can actually relate a humor in a social media? Because quite often, as I said, we are here to fight on social media. We forward posts which have no relevance at all. But putting it all together and talking in a humorous way is what I believe can happen on social media. And all these tell a story, a big, big amount of story there. That is what we need to do. OK, again, coming back to something recent, something uh, that is happening now. Look at that tweet. It came in today morning. It's about how Salman Khan, which is a very serious issue that's happening in today's world, because we Indians believe that you pick on celebrities and bash them, and you'll get all your fun in your life. And here is what it says. What does Salman Khan do? OK, he ended Vivek Obroy's career. Now, these are very, very frivolous stuff. Facebook and Twitter is meant for serious more things. There are many other things that happen there which we actually got to look at and make it happen. All of us remember that we are one. We are gatekeepers to the nation. That is the most important thing. As youngsters today, when you pick up that simple mobile phone and start using it for creating tweets, creating talks, creating various objective debates on social media, which we do as professionals, remember that you are actually creating a revolution. You have a choice either to keep quiet, do nothing about it. As was said, you will be a nobody at the end of it. Nobody will remember you. But if you want to make a difference, and if you want to show the world that I can make a difference by using my social media tools, which we effectively use, be it a political debate, be it an emotional debate, be it to raise funds. A lot of people use social media to raise funds. You won't believe it. Genuinely, they raise funds to the tune of lakhs and lakhs of rupees by projecting a very good story there, which means this medium, which many of us actually use for forwards and jokes, can actually be used for very good causes. Today, I didn't want to get into the political landscape of it, but a lot of politicians, a lot of politicians and political parties are full time into Twitter and Facebook today. Why? Because they feel that the young audience, which sits out there in rural Uttar Pradesh or Bihar, has the access to Hindi tweets and you know, in the local languages that can be there, be in Kerala or Karnataka. That is where the power of social media in India comes from. It is not English. It is a vernacular language that is driving this entire business of social media. And that is where we've got to use it. Use it constructively. Use it good. Because one of the things which I often was told is that Twitter actually has helped improve English. Because you've got to say whatever you've got to say in 144 words. You don't have a choice to go beyond it. So what do you do? That you start improving your language. In school, we had a pressy writing, which made you take a whole text and condense it into a smaller version. What are you doing with social media? For on Twitter, you're doing exactly that. Oh, you want to write big stories? There is always Facebook for you. Please go there and write the bigger stories that can. And I'll just leave you with a bit of thought at the end of it all. Because in social media, we often say, how do we relate with various faculties that happen in social media? For example, how do you actually convey an accident in Twitter? How do you actually convey a message of a distraught individual on Facebook? A lot of us are storytellers. We all love to tell stories. Remember our grandmother used to say, the same old Ekta Raja? And every night we heard the same story, but it had a different interpretation. It is your job of youngsters today, and my honest appeal to each one of you, 
Don't just slither away like that. Use the maximum opportunity of this particular technology of social media for your most effective and good use. That's the most important thing. And I, standing before you as an evangelist in this, would think the revolution is just around the corner. Thank you very much.